Hello friends. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can import a certificate signed by our internal certificate authority into an ESXi. So here I don't have any kind of a vCenter or, or a vSphere. Um, here I just have a simple uh, ESXi machine. So I'm quickly going to log into my ESXi machine. So what we're going to do, we're going to just um, uh, create a CSR file from this uh, ESXi box. And then we need an internal certificate authority where we'll request the server to sign the certificate using its private key. OK. So it's quite simple. So as you can see, I have this green padlock icon, which means that the SSL certificate is already imported. And or rather, the SSL handshake is in place. Uh, so you can see that it's issued to the IP address. And issued by would be the certificate authority's name. And this is the validity period. And if we go ahead and check for any kind of subject alternative name, which is a SAN, and then you would see it has the IP address. So this is the home page of my SXI box. And what I'm going to do, we'll go to the manage. And under manage, you'll see certificates. So here, you can already see that, uh, just like I showed here, uh, the CN, which is a common name, and these details would come automatically. So all you have to do just generate a CSR file. So we're going to click on the import new certificate. So once you click on import new certificate, you'd get two different options, generate FQDN signing request, fully qualified domain name, or you can generate IP signing request. Now the problem with FQDN signing request is uh, once you generate the CSR file based out of this one. So this is the CSR file. Or this, the content of the CSR, not a CSR file. So the content of the CSR, and once you put it in any kind of CSR decoder, you would be able to see that this doesn't have a subject alternative name, uh, which would be, let's say for example, localhost or localhost, localhost dot localhost, something like that. So the domain name would not be present in the subject alternative name, and because it would not be present, the browser won't be able to recognize this certificate and it will throw out an error saying that this is an, uh, this is an uh, insecure connection. Okay, so what I've done, what I did rather is, I have generated a certificate based out of IP signing request. So all you need to do, click on generate IP signing request and we'll copy the content of the CSR and you can just type in CSR decoder and trust uh, I prefer using the trust one uh, but you can use anything else doesn't really matter okay so uh, this is a CSR decoder copy the content of the CSR put it in a CSR decoder box and you could see that the common name subject alternative name and this is the organization. These are different fields, diff different attributes. So what really matters is the common name and the subject alternative name. So here I have common name as the IP address and the subject alternative name in present uh, with the IP address. Hence, it is able to recognize this certificate. So the reason why we are trying to generate this certificate is by default, the ESXi or your vSphere, your vCenter would have a self-signed certificate. Now, when you're talking about secure uh, infrastructure, then you would definitely need to have a SSL certificate signed by your internal certificate authority. And we'll take quickly have a look how we can generate the certificate. So, uh, like I already said, you just need to copy the content of the CSR. And now, so basically all you have to do is just copy it because you cannot uh, download this as a CSR file. So you have to copy the content and then you have to log into your certificate authority server. In this case, I have a web enrollment 
role installed so I'll quickly open up using the IP address um, I will go to request a certificate advanced certificate request I'll paste the content of the CSR I'll select a template uh, in this case I have set up a custom template uh, named as web server SHA-256 which is the hashing algorithm and then I'll click on submit it will take a couple of seconds to process the request okay now in this case I will be downloading a base 64 encoded which will be in a dot sir format dot CER format but here is a catch initially when you're doing it for the first time you have to download the entire certificate chain because this ESXi server needs to recognize your certificate chain of trust so initially for the first time when you're doing it you have to download the download certificate chain because I've already imported the certificate hence I'll not be able to show you but I will show you the steps how to do it exactly okay so base 64 encoded I'll download the certificate chain uh, now when you're downloading a certificate chain this really doesn't matter whether it's a DR or a base 64 um, it will be downloaded in a dot p7b format so for the first time I'm downloading the certificate chain okay and I'm going to place it in my desktop which will be okay so this is having the name start new dot p7b so if you double click on the certificate you will be able to see the entire certificate chain of what I was telling you now if you go to the certificates now you can see that this is my root certificate or you can tell me you can you can call it as root certificate authority so this will be a self-signed certificate so issued to and issued by would be same then you can go to the intermediate certificate so the issued to is my inter intermediate certificate authority and issued by is the root certificate authority and then I have the actual certificate which is for the SXI box which is the IP address 192.168.1.104 issued by our by my internal certificate authority this is the validity period for two years and that's it now what you need to do if we go back to the ESXi here you can see that it tells paste PEM formatted certificate here now I cannot now this is the extension having .p7b I can't I don't have a .pem format uh, which has a certificate chain so what I'm going to do I will be using a tool called open SSL uh, you can download that and we're just going to run a single command which will convert this .p7b into a .pem file a .pem extension and then we will import that content of the certificate into the browser okay so let's go ahead and have a look so I've already opened up uh, my OpenSSL. Uh, it's a quick setup. Uh, all you have to do is just install it. And you have to go to the folder. Uh, did I install it here? Program files. Okay, so it's in C users new downloads open sorry. It's in my downloads folder. Okay. And okay. So this is the ESXi file that you can launch. 
and we are going to use this command so pkc s7 hyphen in so this is we are, we'll have to give the input path so i have placed that p7b file in our uh, in desktop so the path seems fine and hyphen print underscore search this argument and then hyphen output as as in hyphen out and then we give the path where we want the output and then i want the output as let's say esxi cert dot pem okay i hit enter and here i have the dot pem file now all i need to do is open it with a notepad and i would see the breakup of the certificate copy the entire content and paste it here that's it once you've pasted that over here click on import and you would have the certificate imported you can do a refresh and you can see what would's the common name uh, according to your ip address you would have the common name and this would remain same because here we are not making any kind of changes so by default the csr is giving us these inputs or these attributes values right and once you have imported that you can restart the browser uh, you can just log out close everything open it up and you would see the ssl or what you call is this green padlock sign over here and just in case if you are still facing any problem what you can do is you can import uh, the root certificate all you can do is just go to cert lm dot sorry cert mgr dot msc and here i have all i've placed in both the places as a current user and in the local machine i have so you can go to the uh, just a second you have to go to the trusted root certificate authorities and certificates and here i will see ntcg tech root ca so this is my root ca which will be placed under the root certificate authorities and i have intermediate certificate authorities so i'll go to the certificates and i would see i have the intermediate certificate present under this folder and that's it once you have imported that it should work pretty fine that's it guys thank you so much bye bye